Hi guys, Ru here with Narratude for Blender. In this one, I'm going to show you something different. I'm going to talk about compositing and actually editing your renders. And I'm going to show you some cool technique for lighting and fog. So, this is actually a, a model that I have created for our Blender Bros. Patreon. This is going to be a tier 3 tutorial starting from scratch from a cube all the way through, you know, decaling, detailing, texturing, and then post-processing. So if you are interested in supporting us, um, you know, that's just one of the perks on tier three. So check us out on Patreon, link in the video description. And uh, many thanks to ev every single one of you guys who are the supporters over there. The, you know, you guys are amazing. So thank you so much. Now, what I want to show you is just a little bit of a, of a cool trick with lighting. So if I'm going to go back to my basic render, to my raw render, which is this one, right? And, you know, you, you look at the uh, final result, it's a bit different. But what I'm going to talk about is the, the lighting, right? The lighting in the fog, you can see it's everything was edited in Photoshop, so just literally painted, painted by hand. So what I want to talk about is just how these, um, how these lights are created, and how to create a mood, you know, mood and atmosphere, right? Now, first of all, what I want to do is uh, Control J and make this a little bit brighter because it's a bit dim and not the filter. Uh, I want to go to Camera Raw and just make it a bit brighter. So, you know, just a tiny bit brighter, right? So add a bit of exposure and also I'm going to grab a brush here and increase clarity, texture and I'm going to lift some shadows and make this a bit smaller here, the, the size of the brush. And I'm going to actually uh, paint over, uh, where's my tablet? Wait a minute, let me just turn it on. That's the one. So let me just adjust it uh, here and I'm just going to paint over these areas, okay? I'm using a tablet, but you can do it with the mouse. Uh, tablet is simply my preferred way of working because it's much more accurate and more natural Feels just more natural, right? You also want to add some a little bit on the floor not too much. Yeah, not too much But just you know, a little bit on the floor because I'm shooting this with a depth of field um, Like 1.4 something aperture open force depth of field is pretty strong You can see those vents are already falling out of focus. So the, uh, so do the lights so it's just on the cannon and the uh, uh, the uh, doff ends like just behind the wheel more or less. It actually falls off on the second cannon already. So uh, we're just gonna go, you know apply this. And now I'm not gonna fiddle with color. I'm just gonna probably play with colorize or well, this one is pretty awesome. A little bit too dark though. I love this plugin, man. Infinite color is just a blast to work with, you know. It doesn't matter what you pick, it's just looking badass. So, I'm gonna go with this one, maybe, I, I, you know, but I want something a bit more bluish. So, maybe, maybe let's try a few more. This one isn't bad. This one is pretty cool. They're all just wicked, you know. This one is all right. I might actually grab the one that I got from the previous one. It was pretty cool. This one is really nice. A bit too dark though. Very contrasty. That's a really cool one as well. I could pump some science into shadow in this one, you know. Um, so we could go to curves and just drop some science in here and, you know, make it really cool. And remove this one from the highlights and, you know, just kind of like a cross-processing effect here. There you go. Something like that. And let me see this. Uh, mm. Let me see these curves here. Let's go to blue and let's pump a little bit more blue here. In fact, let's remove this point and pump a little bit more here. Whoa. That's what I want to do. Yep. How are we looking? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we got this thing going on. It's a little bit dark, to be honest. Uh, which one is actually responsible for the for the darkening? This one, right? So what we're going to do is double click this and remove it from the dark areas. Splitting this with 
alt click and it should be peachy all right so now <clears throat> the whole point of this exercise is actually play with the fog but uh, as usual i got lost with enough playing with photoshop so you know sorry guys anyway so let's grab a brush and we want to fix these lights right so we want to first of all create some fog as some kind of like a you know smoky effect so the be best way to do it is grab some cloud brushes or maybe steam brushes i don't know where my steam brush pack went to it just disappeared somewhere on a um i was changing a computer recently so it's probably somewhere on my backup pc but i can't be bothered to get it so anyway i'm gonna just work with clouds which are not ideal but um you know what are you gonna do so now you can work with any free brushes that you can find online it's it's you know it's just tons of them so what you want to do first of all is you want to change the settings it's a little bit small this one but you have to go to shape dynamics and um, manipulate a little bit with angle jitters and you know the uh, scatter jitter and whatnot and go to scattering and you know adjust the scattering effect etc right so when you know uh, each time you click your brush is gonna flip right so there we go so each time you click your brush is gonna flip you see give you a different effect so this one is not ideal because it's a little bit oblong but maybe we're gonna find something a bit you know different like roundish like this right you see it just draws clouds right which is not perfect but we, we're gonna you know we're gonna make it work for us so um, grab some different brushes and uh, you know let's try this one for example this one is pretty cool and maybe this one this one is awesome because this actually looks like steam right so you could do something like this here and you know right and there you go and what we can do now is create a second layer right and grab this one and go to filter and go to blur and gaussian and just blur it so you're gonna lose these kind of like a you know cloudy effects right and what we want to do is double click on this one and hold alt and split it and remove it from darker areas okay so it's actually affecting bright areas because if you think how smoke works and this smoke here is backlit by these lights which basically are them very dim because we're painting over them but we will fix it you want to add some more smoke here right in these areas because that's where the light light you know lights are going through right so we're gonna create a second layer now and we're going to change this brush to something round so let's go up and select this one and change the size of it and now we're gonna zoom into this canvas right and uh, let's just turn it off because it annoys me and let's uh, reset this to something you know something white and let's literally paint above these lights but we need to zoom closer now we gotta be precise yeah this is important you can do it with plugins by the way there's a really cool plugin i'm about to try it i made an account but i didn't have the time to actually buy it and download it yet but i'm probably gonna do it later so i'm gonna be most likely showing it to you guys because it looks bloody amazing um so anyway so paint these buggers right with just you know uh, like lines if you struggle with whole, uh, drawing a straight line just hold shift and it's gonna draw a straight line and change it to linear dodge or color dodge you can duplicate it if you want to, to make it a bit brighter and the second layer you could remove it from blacks so hold alt and just remove it from the black you know blacker areas right so it's gonna stay on the on the lights the important the most important thing in painting fake light is to uh, create layers of um, effects so you don't do it on one layer but you're actually creating multiple layers and you stack them so now you see uh, I got this effect and I'm gonna I just dabbed my brush uh, over them and I'm gonna change my um, blend mode here to soft light so when I zoom out now you'll see uh, the difference right uh, let me go here there you go and it starts the, the lights starts popping up right slowly create another layer grab a brush with B and then make it bigger and just top it like this and we're gonna just you know make this effect a little bit you can make it spill because you know this is fog right so the lights gonna spill through the fog that's how the light works watch some movies or some photos with you know fog so you'll understand double click this and remove this again with alt from the darker area so only the the brighter area is going to be affected right which is kind of important so let me see this 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a bit too strong, so we can, you know, drop it down a little bit, right? Something like this, right? Actually, in fact, in fact, it's actually pretty cool. Right? Same, same here, we can just, you know, remove it a little bit from dark areas. And if you compare it, you know, before and after, where is it? Before and after, right? You can see that, you know, we start getting something interesting. If it's too strong, just make it a little bit less strong, you know, that's all you need to do. Then, you know, let's grab this bright color. Also, we have to remember that when you paint something like fog or something, right? It's going to have different colors because it's going to pick up um, our brightness levels, right? That's important to understand. So uh, let's just create a new layer and let's see what we can do here. Yeah, this one is not too good. I need to get a different brush. This one is actually pretty cool because we can feather this. So create something like this, you know, you can spill a little bit up and down and then shift F to repeat the blur and then just drop the fill to something really low, yeah, like this. So you're gonna create like atmospheric fog or something. It's a little bit too dense. Uh, so what we can do is remove it from dark areas again. See like this. So it kind of glows in the back. What you could do now is create a curve layer and grab this handle and drag it up. Okay, so come on. Just drag it up here like this. And we're going to control I to invert it. And we're gonna change the mode to luminosity so it doesn't affect saturation. And uh, let's grab a brush here. Um, B and come on. And let's grab this brush, so like a round one again. The switching brushes in Photoshop is a bit annoying. And then you can sort of make, you know, these areas a bit brighter. You see, just tap around and just make this light really pop through, right? And the same you gotta do with these buggers, you know. So the same principle, basically. So if I was making these lights stronger, uh, I would simply, you know, uh, paint over like this right and change to color dodge and probably with alt again split the slider and remove it from the darker areas right so it's kind of like a glow around this around this light and then just do something like this just dab it with you know with my brush and change to soft light right and then you can see that it becomes a bit more saturated which is pretty cool so grab another layer and simply you know just just up twice and then simply drop the opacity a little bit to add some kind of like a glow from the lights yeah and that's how you create lights in photoshop so this is not super realistic because you know if you really wanted to do an amazing job you would need to then you know go ahead and for example start painting highlights in, in on this canon because when you have lights shining on something right things gonna get brighter so let's reverse this control i and change it to color dodge right and then we're going to um don't know if it's gonna actually work this way but probably will yeah so you probably will need to just you know paint some highlights in here right so something like this and then simply um you know remove it from the darker areas again same same principle basically right so do something like this there you go see and then just reduce the reduce the fill and you got spill, light spill on these right and then you just build these effects one upon another but you see with this one looks a bit more realistic because it's how light actually works right this light would literally lit up all these uh, you know all these uh, ridges right and the color is the same so it would make sense so that's how you do it the same with the tires right you would need to do it in tires so you would need to go here and um, grab a brush and you know just 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 paint all these uh, you know something like this here maybe like a light spill maybe not so deep so remove it from here something like this right so it looks a bit more believable this is a bit too far because there's uh you need to think about angles right um so and about perspective because perspective would not allow you because the light's gonna fall like this it's not gonna curve right so light cannot bounce from here it's gonna only bounce here right so this uh, 
um, this area here is going to be affected, right? Come on. This area is going to be affected, right? This is going to end in here, so and so on. And then, and then when you actually um, go to Control Shift E, I'm going to do it with a Nick Collection with Color Effects Pro, but you can do it with Curves as well. Basically, introducing contrast, you'll see that this image is going to you know pop. So if I'm going to go to Pro Contrast and simply add some more contrast. Um, my image is going to just pop here. Yeah. Boom. See what I mean? And on top of this, we could simply add a, add a vignette to even close it further because it's all about contrast, guys, right? It's all about directing where the viewer, you know, supposed to look. See, now I'm going to close the image with a vignette, right? Um, and introduce a bit more. Let's move this midpoint a bit outside so it's not so dark. And if you compare these two, right, see what I mean? Boom, it just uh, closes the deal. So I've now got to compare it, be, you know, before and after, right? You get, the, you get the point. So, like I said, if you are one of these people who put raw renders on your portfolio, you just need to smack on your head, that's what you need, right? Don't do it, just don't be fucking lazy, because lazy will not get you anywhere, right? Just spent extra time on it and just, you know, molest it, yeah. That's what you need to do, you need to molest your uh, your renders, alright? Just bring it to Photoshop and touch it up a bit, yeah? So anyway, guys, hope, you, hope it helps you out. Like I said, this is uh, November's Patreon. Um, one of the November November Patreons... Um, perks for um, from blender bros so if you would like to you know support us uh, josh gambrell and myself um, there's a link in the video description that you know you can click on and it's gonna pop you to our patreon you can have a look what we have to offer the perks are pretty amazing i think you know there's a lot to a lot to gain from it so you know um hope to see you there Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the vid. This, uh, by the way, was created with tons of add-ons, of course, hard ops, box cutter. The materials were done with uh, definitely EV materials uh, and kit ops, and I was using also Instamat. So there's quite a few add-ons involved in here. Of course, decal machine, because who doesn't use decal machine? And machine tools and mesh machine was also used to create this. In some point, I was removing some bevels that were causing me grief. And all these add-ons, uh, you know, I use and I recommend, and the links are in the video description, so if you want to have a look, go ahead and, you know, you, you can find all the links there. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video.